now begin with an opening statement from Coach Leggins, and then go to questions. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. Coach, please give us a brief opening statement, and then we will go to questions. Um, Got to be proud of my team. Uh, love them to death. They played their hearts out. And they, they got they got outplayed in the second half a little bit, but they played their hearts out. They played really hard, and you got to give all the, all the credit to Kansas. They came out in the offensive rebound and made second-chance points and, and made some big shots. I mean, that's a big-time program. Um, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. We played hard. Um, I told my guys we don't believe in moral victories, but today at the end of the season, this was a great moral victory for our team and our program and our city of Cheney. Um, all our supporters, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our team. You guys should be proud. They gave everything they had tonight, and they just couldn't get the win um, like we wanted to. We wanted to, you know, we wanted to get that Cinderella uh, story and keep going. But tonight we, we, we faced a team that was hungry. They got hungry in the second half and did a great job rebounding. So got to give all the guys on Kansas credit. But I love my team, and they play with such, they play with such you know, fun. They, they, they played hard, and they did everything I've asked. They couldn't be more proud of a, of a basketball team. Now we'll go to questions from the media. First, we go to Ryan Collingwood. Please unmute yourself. Go ahead, Ryan. I know Ryan, it's probably muted. Unmute it, Ryan. Okay. All right. Ryan, are you there? All right, we'll come back to you, Ryan. Uh, we'll go to Carter Hill next. Hey, Coach. Uh, Carter Hill with Fifth Quarter. Congratulations on a great season. I'm just curious, you know, for those unfamiliar with your basketball program, what did you think you showed the nation today about Eastern Washington basketball? They were a good team. We could battle with the best of them. Um, that we're a tough team. You know, we shoot a lot of threes, but we're a tough team. We can go inside, we can go outside. Um, we show them it's a, it's a player's program. And our guys came out and played, and we didn't we, we came up a little short, but you, you can't tell me that we play against Kansas and we shoot 58%, 38% from three. We only missed two free throws and we lose. I think if we would have gave me those numbers before the game, I'd have said we won. Um, but, you know, we, we, we showed that, you know, the big sky is no joke. We got some great coaches in our league. We got some great teams in our league and some great players. And uh, whoever comes out of the league is always going to be very tough. And so, you know, I, I really I love this team. And we're, we're, we're a very good basketball team. And, you know, we, we played really hard. And we have a lot of fun doing it together as a team. Next question we'll go to is Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Yes, it's Kevin McCaskill Jr., uh, FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, Coach, what led to the jump in Tanner Groves' minutes and points per game from last season to this season? <laughs> He's good at basketball. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, he he worked his tail off, and he you know he, he he's done everything that you know we've asked him and more. You know him and his brother and our whole team. They get in there in the morning, they work out, they go hard, they come back and shoot in the afternoon. They really wanted it, and Tanner was one of those guys, you know, that we 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 thought he was really good. I just you know last year as a as a sophomore, he was playing behind the MVP of the league, and it was hard to get a lot of guys minutes. And I you know we we should have figured out how to get him more minutes last year, um, but he he earned every every minute, every second he played this year. Um, great teammate great guy, um, ter <laughs> terrific player. And so, you know, I, I tell the guys all the time, if you're better than the guy ahead of you or you're the best player, you'll play. And, and that's, that's what we stuck by all year long. And he's, he's done great. And that's what, that's what really got him, you know, propelled into where he was at. You know, he got, he started gaining confidence when you start playing a lot more and, and the results come from you, from the hard work you've put in, you know, you start playing with a lot more confidence and it's a confidence game and he felt comfortable and he's done everything, uh, you know, at, at a high level. So you got to be very, very happy for Tanner and his family and his brother because his brother also played really well and so when you have those opportunities um, you got to take him and he, he took his opportunity and and you couldn't be more happier for a player next question will go to John Blanchett uh, Shantae uh, going into this game what did you think how were we going to be able to get Tanner loose for, for for so many points I mean it was that essentially part of the game plan you knew that he could go inside and outside against these guys? 
Yeah, I, I knew that when they play with their big guys, um, they, they, they hard hedge or flat hedge, whatever you want to call it, and they, they kind of uh, – we, we got different turns for it, but they snaked the backside, and so we cut the guy through, and we knew Tanner would get a lot of pops. He's a great shooter. Um, so we knew we'd get that, and then when they came in and took one of the big guys out, um, we knew Tanner could take advantage inside um, against a smaller player. We've done it all year long, finding the mismatch, and he, was, he had the mismatch all game. Um, I, I thought Tanner was, was, was one of the best big guys in the country. And he could score with his back to the basket. He could shoot the three. Um, you know, and so we, we thought we, we'd had a mismatch. I know everyone was really excited to, to play this game. And they, you know, they tell you, oh, this, these guys are really good. Post, post this. Uh, I just thought Tanner had the advantage all game long. And we went to him. And you know, it, he came up aces for us. And he couldn't, he couldn't be happier. I mean, he, he did everything we needed him to do tonight. And he put everything on the line tonight, and, and we came up a little short. But we, we, we felt that he had a mismatch, and we felt that we could get him some open shots and some open looks. Next question goes to Brenna Green. Hi, Shante. Uh, Brenna Green, Crum2 Sports. Um, you know, what do you think it, it means to Tanner to represent Spokane on this stage and also just let the world know that it's not just Gonzaga in the inland Northwest that can, that can do. <laughs> uh, it means a lot. I mean, he, he, <laughs> he spoke can through and through, you know, um, you know, he, he, he put everything, like, like I said, he put everything on the line. We, we've been playing and Gonzaga has been good since I've been, since I've been at Eastern. And it's been one of those deals where you, you got a really good team and it's like having a pro team in your city. And, you know, we, we just keep chugging along, you know, there's no, e we don't have any ego. We know they're a good team. Um, it's fun to watch them play. You got, you know, we're rooting for them now. We need them to, you know, win the whole thing for, for all the Spokane guys. Um, we'll be rooting for them. But, you know, I, I think it means a lot to, to Tanner to be able to play and represent him, himself and his family the way, he's, he, the way he has. You know, he's a, again, he's the MVP of the league. He's a great student. He's a 4.0 student. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's huge for him. I think it's great for him to be able to, you know, represent his family, represent, you know, Spokane, because that's something I know that's dear to his heart. And um, such, to be such a good guy and, and do everything the right way, you know, he, he, he was a gentle giant until he gets in those courts and we call him Psycho T. You know, it, it, he's fun to be around. He's a great teammate. Next question goes to Jesse Newell. Hey, Coach. Jesse Newell from the Kansas City Star. I just wondered what you saw from KU's two guards in Dewan Harris and Marcus Garrett. <laughs> They shot better than I thought. <laughs> they made a lot of threes when it mattered. Um, we, we, were, we were going to the game trying to say, hey, we're going to protect the paint, even though we gave up 42 points in the paint. Um, and they, they hit some timely three-point shots, you know, back-breaking three-point shots. I mean, Marcus Garrett's probably one of the best defensive guards in the nation, you know, and so when he puts it on and, and does a good job. And, you know, Harris, number three, is also a very good defensive guard. So they got two guys that can really hound you, bringing the ball up and disrupt your offense. And I thought they did a great job of doing that. And, you know, they made timely shots, and they made shots that, that were huge. And then, obviously, the offensive player, number 30, I don't want to butcher his name, but number 30, he's just, he's just a really, really good basketball player. And so you had three of those guys really working out, and then, you know, when, when they were able to, to get downhill, when, when they were able to, to drive a closeout, they really put us in a bind. And, again, they did a good job, and Coach, Coach did an unbelievable job of putting his players in a place to be successful. And, and that's something that we'll pick up on, and, and we'll come back stronger. Next question goes to Brenna Green. Shante, the last uh, few years have been difficult for your athletic department. Just what do you think this means to everybody at Eastern to, to have this game and get some national exposure on your program with, with so many questions that have been circulating? Well, that we're a tough university. Everybody through and through is tough. And it's, it's a spot where, you know, you love going to work every day. Um, you know, it's a spot where you have to figure things out. And, you know, at this time right now, obviously we're going through some tough times, but, you know, tough times only make tough people. And I, I believe our university is going to be stronger for it. We have great support uh, from our six-man club all the way down to, 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 to our boosters and our donors in the EAF. You know, you, you got to be proud uh, to be an Eastern Washington Eagle, and I think people who go through this, uh, Eastern Washington, they, they come out, they're, they're proud of where they go from because they come from, you know, you know, this and that. You know, we don't have this, we don't have that, but we're always great. We have great people in our, in our, in our department. We've got great coaches. We have great student athletes. And it, it, just, you just, it, it just is one of those places where 
you're going to have to be tough. You know, you're going to have to to make it work. And I, I believe Eastern Washington deserves a lot of attention because it's a great university. We have great kids on our team, not just our team, but our whole department. And you know, having a having a whole athletic department over a 3.0 GPA, having you know our football team be in the national championship, having our you know soccer team be you know be great. It's just it's a great spot to be in. And then just have great student athletes in, in a small city in a small town like Eastern or Cheney. It's it's one of those things where you. You have to be proud to be from there. And, you know, I, I think we got a bunch of guys that are proud to play for Eastern. And, you know, I have I think there's a lot of people that are proud that they work at Eastern Washington. And there's a lot of alumni that are proud of Eastern Washington, not just, you know, because we've done well, but just because of the people they, they become as they when they leave when they leave our university. They be, I think they're, they're, it's just one of those spots that is special. And, um, you know, we got to cherish it and we got to do everything we can to protect it. And you got to be happy for Eastern Washington. Final question goes to John Blanchett. Uh, Sean Tay, uh, that stretch in the second half where they drew even and then and then moved past you guys, they went to McCormick pretty hard in the post. Anything else in that stretch that you saw that, that hurt you guys? Turnovers and offensive rebounds. You know, I thought we did a good job on McCormick. I thought we, you know, he ended up going 9 of 15 and getting five offensive rebounds. I think the offensive rebounds is where he really scored his points. He made a couple of good jump hooks here and there, but I think the offensive rebounds is what really hurt us. Um, and then obviously a couple of timely threes by number zero um, really hurt us. Uh, but, you know, and, and it just didn't have enough timeouts. You know, we needed to call a couple more, but we didn't have enough. And I just thought, again, they, we kind of ran out of a little bit of gas, but, you know, I think our team played tough. I think they played hard. You know, we, we, we played Tanner tonight. You know, 32 minutes. You know, we had Michael Meadows play 36, Jacob Gross play 36. And so I think, you know, towards that end of the game, towards that stretch, I could have maybe done a better job of getting some subs and a couple timeouts and trying to get to that media timeout a little bit. Um, but I, I thought, you know, for the most part, we, we did a good job and they just hit some timely threes when we didn't need them to. You know, I, they, they, they haven't been a, a great three point shooting team all season long, but they were tonight. And that's what that's what championship that teams do. And and, you know, that's what Hall of Fame coaches do. They put their players in position to be great. And he did that tonight. And his team came up big. Thank you, coach, for your time today. Ryan, you couldn't get it done, man. Just call me. Go Eags. We'll be joined momentarily by Tanner Groves. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. Thank you. We are now joined by Tanner Groves, who scored a career-high 35 points, and we'll begin the press conference. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question, and we are called upon. Please state your name and affiliation first. We will go to uh, Brenna Green first. Tanner, obviously a career high a night for you. It didn't, uh, sorry, Brenna Green from Two Sports. Tanner, obviously a career high uh, for you tonight. Just. Um, you know, obviously you don't get the win, but just how does it feel to ball out on this national stage and, and represent your school and also basketball in Spokane? Oh, man, it's it's honestly so incredible. Um, I'm honestly just so blessed to be here. Um, I got great teammates that were finding me all game, and um, I was knocking shots down. I was feeling good, but, um, you know, we come up short, but that's all right. Um, I was just really happy with the performance that our team, you know, put together today. For the most part, um, you know, uh, we only lost by double digits and, you know, it was a dogfight the entire game. Um, so, I mean, it feels really cool that, you know, we were able to, you know, keep it pretty close here with Kansas and, and make it a game, give them a little bit of a scare. And, and, you know, I played pretty well. And that's just all credit to my teammates and coaches, you know. Um, it's just been such a fun season and, you know, I'm, I'm already excited um, for next year. Next question, we go to Dennis Patchen. Please unmute yourself, Dennis. Sorry about that. Uh, Dennis Patchen from KHQ. Tanner, uh, when do you feel good about this season? Um, yeah, I mean, the loss will definitely, you know, sting for a few days, but 
you know, I'm I'm li- really looking forward to you know just getting back home, relaxing, having a little bit of time off, and and uh, just taking a little bit of time to reflect. Um, you know, I think this year, you know, we were projected to be number one seed out of the Big Sky, um, and we ended up winning the whole conference just like we were projected to. And then we came in and you know gave one of the better teams in the nation a game until the very end. Um, so you know, I'm just I'm just so proud of my teammates and and uh, coaches and everyone in the program and and yeah I mean it's definitely going to sting for a little bit but at the end of the day you know you just got to be you just got to be happy with um, you know our effort today I think you know we we went out there and and performed pretty well for the most part and and we played hard the entire 40 minutes so you just got to be you got to be uh, proud about that next question we'll go to Keith Hi, Keith Oso, KXOY. Uh, Tanner, what are you going to remember about this game, do you think? Will it be, you know, the, the quick start up at half, disappointing at the end? Like, what do you suppose is going to stick out to you? Uh, I, I just think it's going to stick out, like, just how, how hard we played, you know? I mean, I, I touched on it in the last couple of questions, but, you know, like I said, I, I'm just so so proud of our guys. I mean, we, we just played so hard. We battled all game. Um, you know, we tied with a, a much bigger team on the rebounds, which – it's pretty impressive um, if you think about it, and you know I'm just I'm just really happy. You know I'm looking at the stat sheet over here right now and just seeing a whole bunch of things. But but yeah, I mean I think just from this game, it's just going to be how tough we played and how hard we played. And you know I just love all these guys on the team, and I couldn't be more proud to represent Eastern Washington and and be from Spokane and represent Spokane. And you know I just I'm just so proud of. Um, you know, how we played today and, you know, it didn't, didn't go the way that we wanted, obviously, but, um, you know, I'm always just going to remember, you know, this, this team in general this year is, you know, only two other teams in, in Eastern's history have, have done what we, what we did this year. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to be incredibly proud of, of our program, of our program, uh, coaches and players of just, you know, how we performed all season long. Next question, we'll go to Karthik. Hey, Tanner, it's Karthik from Krem2 Sports over in Spokane. Um, I'm sure this is disappointing, and you're not looking too much into the future, uh, but you did mention, you know, looking forward to next year and getting back out on the court. You guys are going to be returning basically, you know, all the key players except for Jack Perry and Jacob Davison next season and likely to be the favorite once again. I mean, you know, how much does that drive you going into the next season and having this experience into the NCAA tournament to, you know, have a shot to do this again next year? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you you actually heard it here first, but uh, you know Jack Jack Perry's he's going to come back for some more next year. Um, I'm really happy about that because he's he's an incredibly heady guard, one of my best friends on the team, one of my roommates, and definitely looking forward to playing another year with that guy. So he'll he'll be back. But but yeah, I mean we're we're returning a, a whole bunch of guys. You know we got a lot of guys, a lot of key players coming back, and you know from what I see, I mean. The, the ceiling is, is so high for us. Um, it's incredibly high. Uh, we just got a, we got a ton of hoopers on the team. We got a ton of guys, ton of young guys um, that are just really incredible. You know, you only you only saw 17 seconds of a few guys there on the bench, like Steel Venters. You know, I expect Steel to to you know come in next year and and be one of the one of the better scorers in our whole entire league. You know, I, I think we got a ton of guys. Coaches have done an unbelievable job of recruiting. You know for our team this year and and for the guys coming in and you know I, I think we're definitely going to be dangerous next year and I'm really looking forward to next season already you know I, I love basketball so much I love my team so much and you know I just can't wait to get it going again next question goes to John Blanchett uh, Tanner, I know you're oblivious to this kind of thing during the game in the heat of the moment are you prepared for all the folk hero stuff that you're going to encounter out on social media now <laughs> you're blowing up yeah um i mean yeah i'll have to see i don't know i looked at my phone a little bit i saw all the notifications and you know it's kind of funny but you know um i've just worked so hard up until this moment um in my whole basketball career in my life um and i'm just i just couldn't be thankful for you know the the people that have pushed me to be there you know my my parents have been so huge and my brother um, and my even my younger brother, he was in the stands today. I was happy to see a uh, whole family. My girlfriend's been awesome. Um, grandparents, everyone, you know. Um, it's pretty crazy, pretty surreal that um, I'm getting, you know, a lot of publicity from all this. But um, 
I, I think I'm just going to continue to be myself and um, continue to, you know, be humble and be proud and, and grateful um, that I that I get to play at such an such an awesome university and get to play for great coaches and play for a great program with, you know, some of my best friends out there. Um, so at the end of the day, yeah, it's pretty cool, but, you know, I'll probably look past it a little bit and, I mean, I'll probably, you know, enjoy it for a little bit, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, I just got to be grateful for what I got. Next question goes to Jesse Newell. Hey, Tanner, Jesse Newell from the Kansas City Star. Um, looked like Coach Bill Self found you after the game. What did he share with you? Yeah, he just said, you know, he just said um, he had a lot of respect for my brother and I said, you know, we, we had a heck of a game. Um, we both did. Um, and, you know, it's it's really cool to get some some crazy recognition like that from, you know, one of the one of the premier coaches in, in the entire NCAA. Um, you know, I didn't really think about it at the time, but because I always usually do that, I always go up to the other coach, you know, even with all the COVID, I'll always go up to him and, and I always got to, you know, show respect to my opponent. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's really surreal that, you know, Coach Self, you know, came up to me and, said he respected, you know, my, my performance today. And, you know, I, I'm just thankful for, you know, the opportunities that um, we got today. So that was really cool. Next question goes to Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Yes, Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Mass. Uh, what was the most important thing that you did in the off season that led to your, your spike in production this year? Yeah, I think the most important thing was, um, you know, obviously it was it was a COVID year and our uh, postseason tournament got canceled. So I moved back in with my parents. My brother did as well. And, you know, that was probably one of my biggest assets is that I had my brother at home with me. So, you know, I had I had a guy that was really willing to rebound for me and um, willing to, you know, compete with me every day, um, whatever we were doing, shooting, playing one on one, all that Um my parents were always out there in the driveway with us rebounding. Um, my little brother, Dylan, he was always out there too, um, which was real cool. But, um, you know, being at home, just the biggest thing for me was um, I just knew that I had to have an edge um, going into the offseason given that um, the player of the year um, of the Big Sky was playing, playing ahead of me and I had to take his position. So I knew that I had huge shoes to fill and a lot of credit to my man Mason Peetling who, you know, had an unbelievable year. Um, 20, 20, uh, 2019, 2020 year. And uh, so I knew I had an, a huge f uh, shoes to fill. Um, and so, yeah, I just put my head down. I grinded as hard as I could. Um, did all the at-home workouts I could do. I always had a ball in my hand every single day of um, the quarantine. And that was probably the biggest thing was just the ball in my hand. Um, and I just, you know, worked on my skills and did everything I could do. Final question goes to Karthik. Hey, Tanner, uh, this one's a more lighthearted question, but uh, on social media, which I'm sure you haven't gotten much of a chance to look at, people have been comparing you to uh, your look to Bill Walton and uh, Will Ferrell from Semi-Pro. Which <laughs> one of those comparisons do you like more? I like the Will Ferrell one the best because, you know, I've always loved Will Ferrell growing up. Uh, Step Brothers is probably one of my favorite movies ever. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> that's that's really funny. But, you know, if you haven't if you haven't looked them up, Look up Lil Dicky too. A lot of people compare me to that guy too. Um, but no, nah, that's yeah, it's all fun and games and you know, at the end of the day, yeah, it's just basketball's obviously a game. It brings so many people together and um, you just gotta love the environment of March Madness and everything and you know, it's it's really cool. Um, that's that's hilarious though. I I'll, I'll have to check that out. But yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Tanner, for your time today. Thank Appreciate you guys. It. That's it for the post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with the recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us. Yeah.